Ladies and gentlemen, it works. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, assume the sitting position, those of you who have to sit down. The rest of you, uh, if you stay standing, it looks like the uh, National Anthem got stuck in the groove. All right, we're ready to go shortly. Uh, it's not often I kind of uh, improvise. As John Chinners would say, carefully rehearsed ad libs at a drop of a hat. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present the launch of the Revival Press production of Areas of Consolation by John Liddy. Oh, the publisher, or as, he is, as, he is, as he is referred to in the office, God, will now say a few words. I give you Dominique Taylor, publisher of Revival Press. Dominique Taylor. Nice to meet you, Tom. And I'd uh, just like to, uh, uh, first of all, to thank the, uh, the gallery here, Una McCarthy and uh, Siobhan O'Reilly, who arranged uh, this little gathering for us. So I'd like to thank you all for coming here to, uh, today for the launch of Arias of Consolation by John Liddy, published by Revival Press, the poetry imprint of the Limerick Writer Centre. In total, this is our 118th title that we have published since we began our community publishing program over 10 years ago now. And this is the fifth collection we have published from John Liddy. John Liddy's poetry is often has always been important for us at the Revival Press and at the Limerick Writer Centre. He was the first poet we published back in 2009 when we published the well new and selected poems. Poets are often encouraged to make it new when writing, but for me, and I feel more importantly, Liddy makes it real. His work is honest and authentic. He writes from the heart, but he crafts from the head. Indeed, he has chopped the wood and carried the water for a long time now in the service of poetry. It was and is our priority to publish writers from Limerick, and I'm glad that we have been responsible for not just publishing seasoned writers like John, but also publishing many new voices from Limerick over the years. This book by, uh, by John Liddy, Our Areas of Consolation, is, I believe, another very important addition to the canon of Limerick literature. From my perspective, it fulfills all the objectives of the Limerick Writer Centre. His work is published in Limerick. Is writing, he is writing about Limerick. He is a Limerick poet with the skill and sophistication comparable with the best national and international writers out there. I am very proud to have been able to publish this book. I believe it will stand the test of time and be a rich source of enjoyment, reference, about the social history of Limerick and its people for many years to come, as well as being great poetry. I'd like to thank especially John Shitters, who created the original drawings and the cover image for Arias, and Owen Deverup for the fabulous foreword uh, to the book. I'd also like to thank my colleagues at the Limerick Writer Centre, who work to make our publications what they are. Tom Muldowney, Marion Cody, Sheila Sugru, Patrick Howard, and especially Lot Bender, our book designer. Lot has been responsible for creating the professional look for our books for some time now. Okay, that's all I've got to say. Uh, at this stage, I would have been introducing Owen Deverham, but unfortunately, I had to go to Dublin uh, rather unexpectedly. But he has uh, sent me an MP3 of what he was going to say, so I'd like to play that for you now over the speaker. Friends and guests, I'm honored to launch Areas of Consolation by John Liddy. I want to welcome you all to this beautiful setting which many of us will still remember as the Carnegie Free Library. It's setting in the People's Park 
will undoubtedly trigger many memories from times past. I want to begin by acknowledging the work of Dominic Taylor and the Revival Press. The Limerick Writers' Centre have shown a determination to publish established and emerging writers, and because of the centre's work, often done on a shoestring, Limerick is a far better place. I have written a detailed introduction to this truly important poem, and I was delighted to be asked to do so. John Liddy's work, for me, has been a source of solace and inspiration. My strong connection with Liddy's writing, however, doesn't just stem from the commonalities we share in terms of background, worldview, or locality. His generous encouragement of other writers, his editorial and translation work, his energetic readings, his organisation of poetry festivals, and his consistent level of poetic output are all testimony to his achievements and status. I view Liddy as being an important bridge between the castle poets and the newer waves of Limerick writers. His poem, Pound, devalued in White House, published in 1977, was inspired by a headline written by my late uncle Seamus O'Canada, himself a poet, local historian and journalist. That poem is a personal favourite from John's early output. Liddy's co-founding of the Stony Thursday book with Jim Burke in August 1975, the publications by Revival Press of The Well, The Secret Heart of Things, Madrid and other poems, and his co-edited books with Dominic Taylor, 1916, 2016, an anthology of reactions, are ample evidence of a poet solidly dedicated to his craft. Living and working in Madrid since 1982, but closely connected to Limerick and to Ireland and to Rathbaran, fluent in Irish and Spanish. Liddy is an Irish poet strongly influenced by the places he has lived. The touchstones of Rathbaran, Jamesborough and Madrid loom large in his work, as do Liddy's wider reading of an extensive range of poets and writers. So to the poem itself, across eight movements, Arias of Constellation is an epic poem, beautifully embellished with the work of the renowned artist John Shinners. It is arguably the most important poem written about Limerick since the publication of Bard Hogan's Drunken Thady and the Bishop's Lady in 1861. Given the city's long tradition of musicality, stretching from its smoky dance halls on the Bally Simon Road and Mulgrave Street to the Shandos inflected voice of the Cranberries Dolores O'Riordan, from its many musical societies to the hip-hop of the Rossangano family, from the plain chant recitals led by Professor King Griffin to the sublime voice of Denise Chyla, it is entirely fitting that John Liddy has used the term aria and the ghost voices of many singers surface in this poem. This is not at all surprising, given the importance of music and culture in the Liddy household. John's mother nurtured his love of reading. His father was a talented musician, playing the piano at functions in Hanratty's Hotel and many other venues in Limerick. It is Limerick City and to a somewhat lesser degree, the county, which is the true star of this major poem. It is laden with references to people such as Paddy Sausage, Patsy Stark, Francis Coleman, and places like Joe Malone's, The Tholso, Casey's Fish Shop. But it's important to remember that John Liddy doesn't fall into the trap of nostalgia. He doesn't gaze at the city and county through a nostalgic lens. Arias of consolation evidences Liddy's thorough warts and all knowledge of Limerick. While echoes of the past ripple through the poem, Liddy is as comfortable writing about 21st century Limerick as he is thoroughly knowledgeable about its long and complicated past. It's abundantly clear to me 
that the Madrid-based poet has kept in touch with the place through family, regular visits home, and through his reading and listening. Arias works like a multi-layered mind map of the city and county. Liddy is all at once an archaeologist, a lyrical stonemason, and a singer. His composition is a pan to a place which has been shamefully maligned and stigmatised too many times. Arias of Consolation is a song which, like the best of songs, works to soothe us and to save our lives. John Liddy's Arias of Consolation are a reservoir. They are a reservoir of consolation. These arias sing to our memories, our hearts, our loves, our disappointment, our heartbreak. They map the minutiae of Limerick, tracing the lines of its lanes, rows and bows. Like a hazel rod, they divine hidden streams, trenches and fairy forts. They tell stories of ball hoppers, craw thumpers and alakadoos. They invoice the experiences of the voiceless. They name names like Dodo Redden and Pinky Downey. They unveil Limerick as a complex, multi-faceted place, which is never quite at peace with itself. Arias of Consolation is a truly powerful piece of writing, which I strongly commend to you. Thank you and congratulations, John. Uh, I'd like to invite John up now to uh, respond possibly to that. Respond to that. <laughs> your words. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic, for your kind words. And of course to all who is in Dublin. And What I would like to say is I'd like to just thank everybody for coming today at 3 o'clock here in this setting, in this park. Um, I'm delighted to see everybody here. I didn't expect this number. Uh, neither did Dominic, I think. But um, here we are. Uh, before I move in and read a little bit of the poem, I'm going to read the shortest section. Um, but before I do that, I'd just like mention uh, a few things. On the way over from Madrid on the plane, and down on the bus, on the Air Eagle bus, I wrote down a couple of ideas that I wished to mention here. Um, I've been writing this book, this book length poem all my life and I'm still not finished with it so if you think you have the finished job here I don't think that's true I'm not finished with it because um, the relationship continues for as long as I am alive at least my relationship with women the poem is an attempt as I see it to shine some light on Ireland's best kept secret, which is Limerick. Those of us who know the place and the people will always vouch for its ethos, its heritage, its integrity of place and person. And I've tried to capture some of that in this poem. I'm going to read first the prologue to the book and finish, and then read a short section and then finish with the epilogue. Um, there are people I should mention, John Chinners, who has been mentioned, but I'd like to acknowledge that as well. And I'd like to thank John for the work he's done for this book. Um, without any qualm or anything, he did it immediately the moment I asked him and he's produced some wonderful drawings for just for this collection, just for this book. I'd also, of course, 
um, thank Dom again for the great work he's doing and all his team for poetry and publishing in Liverpool through the Liverpool Writers Centre. Uh, Jim Burke, Cameron Donaghy, and Eddie Whelan I've dedicated the poem to. Why? Because we are we have been friends for as long as I can remember. I hope Cam doesn't mind my saying that she used to babysit <laughs> me. God forbid. <laughs> and so it does go back a long time. Um, Jim, I've known practically all my life um, also. And we used to edit, the, we founded and edited the Stony, Stony Thursday back in 1975. And I'm very happy to say that we're still friends. <laughs> after all those years. And Eddie, I don't think, is here. But he never turns up to anything <laughs> of mine anyway. So <laughs> I'm kind of used to that. But I'd like to thank Ed also. Also, my brother uh, Liam in Madrid, who read uh, first drafts of this poem, as did Sean O'Donnell. And Derek O'Flaherty, who's here, over there in the red jacket, his Mayo jacket, <laughs> with cork colours, but anyway. <laughs> um, they helped me enormously to put this poem together, finally. Uh, it went through 20 drafts. So that's a lot of drafting, a lot of work, a lot of uh, taking in, leaving out, and so on. But I was eternally grateful, I am eternally grateful for their advice. And Derek said to me, when they were reading the drafts, they didn't have a title for this work. And Derek suggested Arias of Consolation. So it was Derek's title in many ways. We gave it to him. Um, finally, I just hope that what you have in your hands in this book, I hope that uh, it's a poem that sings of people and place. And I hope that works for you, the reader. The prologue. The cover prized open by a council worker. Sound of iron on stone along Denmark Street and the putrid smell of centuries in the air gave me the opening to spin my tail with sodden threads of grey-green cloaks caught in a sudden wind like a suspended gull, a school of seals in Shannon's clutches during the heat of the contest between spear and sword on the bare place cropped by horses, those threads now used to weave while able to sing of times gone, present and to come, touch the pulse of place and people. Part two. Did I hear the Sha'ulo, sung by blind Mary Madden, smooring her, her hushaby near the fire in the cabin dark? the bard burning with indignation and hyperbole. There let him stand with sword in hand and flashing arms of steel in bright array as on the day he made the foeman reel. Testimonies bequeathed like a penal cross for safekeeping, a forgotten detail like Haverty's blind piper, Patrick O'Brien, who lived on Pump Lane off Nicholas Street with his barefoot daughter forlorn by his side. The oxidized sign of welcome on a brass plate, a bootless scraper or a two-tailed cat near Casey's fish shop, seldom noticed now. Vanished relics like the Lyric in Baker Place or the Hatch in Sullivan's kiosk for summer ice cream in the People's Park or thirst quenched by the chained cup to the fountain, the iron feel of it on my lips I can still recall, clear as the cold sup, all but evaporated, and mind you, some of it good riddance, 
like the ones off Bohorbui and Carey's Road, eclipsed by housing estate. Good riddance to squalor, says poverty, while hankering for a Turkish bath, the bread delivered to you by Humphrey or Tobriti, the rattle of Willie's Republican churns of milk from his herd, anecdote and nostalgia that stay with us to enliven our lives, help us to seek and cherish improvements, appreciate uniqueness of birth before both of us perish. Fit Kilkenny Remolds rule the road on the highways and byways with hospitals requests, the radio before a cyber world, the bush telegraph of a plane crash behind Hall's range when one Richard de Salis from Bristol made his last splash, or the Hungarian refugees in Nock camp in 1956, a temporary solution offered to people desperate for some provision in those days of Cade, Mila, Falter and Fosterage, when neighbours gave homes to orphaned children and Mehel their measuring gauge, while I tuned in to son the miscellany and Mokyol who excuses for missing mass, a fry up, a payoff, served up to the family. Hall's pictorial weekly, an outlet for political satire from Ballynagash, skullduggery scorned from the telling power of the fictional. Oh, where are the bleachers, dredgers, purifiers, tearers and moisture tasters, men and women who could read stone like market buyers a bargain, bear langer and assayer their language, left with messages in the foundations of bridges. Upon the level by the square, I will strive to live with love and care. The hand of Michael Pierce and his son Willie, brother of Patrick, on the Reredos in St Mary's Cathedral. The beams from Cratlow holding up the Royal Palace in Amsterdam and Westminster Hall. The misery cards overlooked by Cromwell and his stabled horses. The genius of Murphy around the town, his work the talk of Kenny, the raw material a London builder's envy. Spider, hourglass, figure eight, or even egg timer, shapes of early settlements on evolving maps, topography to believe in as generations grappled with expansion, roads through fields roamed when younger, desecrated ring fort, somebody's fairy vision for the future of bypasses and flyovers, the countryside sacrificed for progress, nature's treasures forfeited to high rollers who built roundabouts for a quick buck during boom times, despoiled the meadow of its harvest, the inoffensive brook, a stagnant stench, the quarry bereft of stone, a graveyard for cars, carelessness shown to a mud river's innocent drowning, a woodland's meditative peace, a pasture's bleat, a food farm full of greens, honouring its ancient custom of alliance with the city and its indispensable Saturday morning market, wherein poets observed they find the people good, and so say all who savour a unique pause in their lives, when camaraderie rules over the roast pig on the turning spit of sharpened knives. What is here before you will come to mimic itself. The black ink of the word will dim and fade like Daly's flag from Limerick. A passing phase, a shibboleth recalled by one who in a future unknown may connect with memory through whiff of shunning, coursing through its lines, out into the span as far as the mouth of the estuary cloaked with seals, spear and sword one clan, like gull and swan drifting in a morning peace, where two waters imperceptibly merge forever to lap the shore of people and place.
Thank you very much, John Liddy. Now, before I get to the emotional part, I'd like to thank uh, John for a wonderful rendition and its um, crystallization of uh, many years tiling in the vineyard. And uh, it's, not, it's not over yet, so keep on keeping on, Dr. Liddy. Now, Hanky's at the ready. Area. <coughs> It's never like this at rehearsal. Areas of consolation, copies of the aforementioned, are available for sale. At the giveaway price of 12 euros, for Christ's sake, for heaven's sake, buy a copy. We have to keep the roof on Dominic's behorn. <laughs> a carefully rehearsed laughter from Dr. Shears. Anyway, an even more important message. Uh, fellow sufferers, you're all invited. Depends on how many books we sell. You're all invited to the White House, where it all began. Thank you. Good evening. Bye bye. Thank you.